As the Senate takes a break over how to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act, Oklahoma's health officials are making sure Oklahoma's U.S. Senators understand the impact the Senate bill will have on the state. Meanwhile, amid all the confusion and rhetoric, something that rarely happens in rural health care is now just weeks away in Sayre, Oklahoma. Oklahoma's two U.S. Senators are getting an earful about the health care bill from Oklahomans. Craig Jones, president of the Oklahoma Hospital Association, wanted to make sure Senators Jim Inhofe and James Langford understood how many people in this state depend on Medicaid. One out of three Oklahomans is either uninsured or is on Medicaid. In parts of rural Oklahoma, hospitals get up to 80 percent of their revenue from Medicaid. In Oklahoma today, over 840,000 people receive Medicaid benefits, and of those, over half a million are children. Nico Gomez is CEO and president of the Oklahoma Association of Healthcare Providers. He, too, has given our senators information on what Medicaid cuts would do to the long-term care and nursing home industry. We've actually been having great conversations with both offices. I personally have talked to Senator Langford myself and have talked to his staff and I've talked to uh, Senator Inhofe's staff as well. Neither senator was available for an interview with ONR. Langford's staff deferred to his Facebook page. He is still undecided on the bill. Senator Inhofe had an encounter with reporters and was abrupt with his response when asked if he supported the bill. Quote, I'm not sure what the bill does. I'm just sure it's better than Obamacare. Craig Jones of the Hospital Association believes lawmakers are focusing mostly on funding cuts. And now we have the federal government talking about, you know, reducing overall Medicaid funding to the states by $800 billion over the next 10 years. Um, it, it'll be decimating. And he says that doesn't really fix health care. There are multiple sides of this elephant that need to be addressed, and yet the one that seems to be getting the major attention are the dollars. According to Nico Gomez, the state already spends about $560 million a year for nursing home care, and he estimates the current Senate bill will cost Oklahoma $132 million in federal Medicaid funding. About 20, 25 percent of Oklahomans are directly impacted by Medicaid, but everybody's indirectly by, impacted by Medicaid because it's the state largest payer. So if they're not paying as much money for services, that has to be paid by somebody else. Nico Gomez says under the Senate plan, it will be up to the states to decide what Medicaid pays for and who gets coverage. My biggest concern is we're, we are playing with people's lives, and I don't want to overstate that. I mean, people have health care that they're so dependent on being able to survive day to day. Amid all the politics and possible changes in health care, in Sayer, Oklahoma, something that rarely happens in rural health care officially will happen in a couple of weeks. The Sayer Community Hospital closed in January. It will reopen in the middle of next month. The new CEO, Bob Hicks, gives a lot of the credit to his staff. Lots of great people that we've been able to hire to, that are willing to do go far beyond what their job descriptions would take or say to be able to get this up open. Hicks says about half of his expected patients are on Medicare, unlike other parts of the state where Medicaid patients are the biggest number. Uh, we're about 12 percent here of Medicaid and the rest is made up of insurance and private pay and then we run about uh, 10 or 12 percent uh, uh, of self-pay which means that they generally don't have the resources to be able to pay. And Hicks knows if the Republican health care bill with major cuts to Medicaid happens, those numbers will change dramatically. You're going to have people that fall off of Medicaid and that at the same time uh, can't buy anything on the exchanges. And so they're going to present to rural hospitals some 40 rural hospitals in Oklahoma are in financial trouble, but Hicks believes succeeding with a rural hospital is not rocket science. I haven't had a physician turn me down of coming out here, but they're not coming out here to live. I get them to come out one day a week, specialists. We have a clinic across the street. But Hicks does have one element of success most rural hospitals don't, a family doctor who is very well known in Sayre. You know, if you don't enjoy people, you better stay out of medicine. <laughs> you know, that's, 
And uh, so I, I love people, you know. 87-year-old Dr. Kenneth Winery still sees 20 to 25 patients every day, five days a week. And believe it or not, he still makes house calls. I do make a few, you know, but every now and then there'll be somebody that can't come in and have to have a face-to-face confrontation for Medicare, you know, face-to-face. And if they can, I, I go see them. And... Dr. Whittemery says when the hospital shut down, it was a major blow to his community. When it closed down, 80 jobs went out, out overnight, you know, and, and it, it was really a blow. And, of course, the people, people have gotten used to having a hospital almost next door. While Dr. Winery is not sure where everything will end up with a new health care law, he does know one thing. He plans to keep seeing patients, whether they can pay or not. I have quite a few patients that don't have insurance now, and there's gonna, I guess there'll be more of them. And I, I have a deep feeling for those, you know. And, and uh, I've never turned anybody down because of no insurance or no money. Dr. Winery said he would be back making rounds at the hospital when it opens, but he only plans to drop in on those patients he delivered. That's really okay because that would be just about everybody. And those he didn't deliver, well, he decided he'll stop in to check on them too. When it comes to health care, Sayre is one lucky town for more reasons than one.